This video is an introduction on how to develop an e-commerce with Gatsby, Stripe and Strapi. And effectively this is a teaser as the, to the project that we will actually work on on the complete Strapi course which is available on Udemy and Podia, link in the description. These are a completely free addition to the course which was already 9 hours and at this point it should be around 14 to 15 hours of content. If you don't have much time, 3 hours are the core curriculum of the course and every other is just a set of exercises. This is part of an exercise in which we actually build an entire e-commerce. So, well, let's start by showing that uh, in order to display the products this way, we can set our container to have a maximum width of 640 pixels, and then we can set uh, a div to have a display of uh, uh, type grid and, and use a grid template so that no matter how many products you have, we will only fit three per row. So it's actually very elegant. And uh, these products can be fetched in the index.js page by using what is called a page query. A page query is used in pages and it's a way to populate data inside of a page. So this query, uh, first of all, if you know GraphQL, you can technically just write your query by playing around with it. But if you don't know GraphQL, the beauty of working with Gatsby is that you can go on localhost 8000 slash underscore underscore GraphQL and you can just play around with what is called the Explorer, which is up here. And the Explorer will help you build your queries. So if you look on the left, you can see Strapi product, which is one product, or you can type all Strapi product, and you can get all of the products. So from there, I can go on edges or on nodes, and then I can start getting the information that I want. So I'm here on nodes, and I can click on ID, description, created at, name, pricing set, slug, strappy ID. And then I can even get the thumbnail through thumbnail, child image sharp, fixed, and fixed would uh, typically be written by having a property, for example, of width, and we can set the width to 200 pixels. And then within it, we will get our uh, Gatsby image which we can retrieve by using this uh, signature dot 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 Gatsby image sharp fixed or I guess we could also just type source, uh, src here to get a, a single image and if we press play we basically get our products here and the beauty of this is that we can literally just copy this paste it in our page query and we will receive our data in our data object up here. Uh, I guess this leads us to the question of how can we get data from Strapi and the answer is by using the Strapi source plugin. So if I scroll down here and I go in Gatsby config you can see that I have a plugin here, I have my plugins on line 7 and the first plugin which is this object from line 8 to line 15 is called Gatsby source Strapi. It takes a bunch of parameters in the form of an object called options uh, which consists of the API URL then we have a limit for the query and then we have content types. As of now, it also works with single types and also allows you to authenticate if you want to keep your CMS uh, secured or you want to make it so that it requires authentication. From then, once we have our single products or rather a list of products, we can use a similar query in GatsbyNode.js to use the create pages API to create pages. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get all of our products, Strapi, all Strapi product and all of our edges. So we have a list of edges. And then for each of the edges up here on line 37, I'm gonna call the create page method, which literally creates a page by using a template. So the next step is to create the product.js template, which is in the templates folder. And in here you can see as a base level, we simply use a layout, we add the image, we add a bunch of stuff. And the beauty of this is that instead of the page query, we're using a query that uh, will be dynamically populated, as you can see here with the dollar sign ID. This dollar sign ID will be dynamically populated by the Gatsby node.js 
create page call. So if I look here at line 41, I see context, ID. This ID here on the left will be passed to this query in the product.js template. And once we get there, and we have basically our uh, home page and our single product page, and they uh, work properly. And by the way, the beauty of Gatsby is that by this being statically built, it means that these products are already optimized for SEO. The, the website is basically done. Now we just have to focus on the functionality. So the next step will be to build the cart. Some uh, uh, middle step uh, will be to uh, build a math library and a formatting library. I'm going to cover that in a second. But the big next step is to create our add to cart function. And a good approach would be to use a, a key or, a, or I guess to store data in a local storage. So we can type, we can click add to cart and that will populate our local storage. Now to make it so that this component, which is a template, the template.js, and this cart up here uh, are connected and at the same time when you refresh the cart is still there so it gets repopulated every time in order to do that we're going to use context and I'm going to cover that in a second but basically I can now click here on the cart icon and I can get to the cart page and the cart page is fairly sophisticated so let's quickly take a look at what we do with the context our context is in the context uh, folder and it basically uh, will return our context provider so that we can use it. So whenever we need to use our cart, we're going to need to wrap our component inside of it. And it's also going to pass a few functions, or rather uh, two functions and a variable. The variable is the cart, so the cart object. And then we're going to have a R2 cart and a clear cart method, which are based, uh, um, they, they do their own thing, and then they call this update cart function, which basically will set the cart by calling the set cart from use state but it will also save the cart, which is instead a function that saves the cart to local storage. So in effect, the cart that you see here is not the cart that you see here, because while they are synchronized, this cart is in memory while this cart is in local storage. So if I clear the cart here, this cart is still in, uh, um, in the application memory, and I can still play around with it. So, and the beauty of this is that um, unless they clear their, their own um, local storage, uh, we're going to remember which products they had. And to account for that, we also have a bunch of checks in the back end to ensure that uh, only products that um, are, uh, are still available can be bought. But now the beauty of this is that whenever we change a quantity up, up here, we, we change the cart everywhere. So you can see up there that the number changes, but it also changes the total and the subtotals. And in order to show all of this nice math, we had to build a math library which is in the utils folder we have a formatting function so we have our cart and our format the formatting function is simply a function that uh, will take the price uh, which is going to be in cents because uh, uh, stripe uses uh, the number in cents so 100 cents is a dollar so that's how we're going to need to format our numbers but then we can just divide it by 100 and style them with two local string on the other end, our cart is going to be a basic library which has a few variables, such as the tax rate, the free shipping, and shipping rate. And then we're going to have uh, functions that have to do with local storage, the save cart and the get cart. And lastly, we're going to have a set of math library or math function that will reduce the cart, so they'll operate on an array, and they will basically calculate the subtotal, calculate whether the shipping should be paid, and calculate the total for it. So by having this nice library, we uh, make it so that all of the math is consistent and that's why we're going to be using a very similar library in the back end. So at this point we have a website, we have a set of products, we can show the single product page, we have our cart, we can navigate around and now it's time to initiate checkout. This is where we have to start integrating with uh, Strapi in a different way. So this part right here of getting the products can be achieved by using our plugin. That's because we can bake those products in. Every time we change the products in Strapi, we can have a webhook trigger the rebuilding of our Gatsby blog 
and uh, uh, as such, all of these products can be hard coded. Like they can be inside of our bundle. We don't need to request the products every time from Strapi. On the other end, when we need to process the payment, we actually have to integrate with the real live API, which means that the second you see this, the backend, Strapi, has to actually do some stuff. This is because of the checkout flow, or rather the payment flow from Stripe. So the checkout flow with Stripe is based on using a payment intent, which means that we're gonna set up our payment intent in the backend, which basically will pre-authorize a payment, or rather it will pre-authorize the collection of a set of card information. And then we can send back this payment intent to this element component, which is a React component, which will display the, um, the checkout element in our front end. So if I go here, that means that this part right here is all baked. This part right here can be can be had on a let's say on a on a static level. There's no need for any dynamic uh, uh, element here. However, when I press on initiate checkout, I actually have to query the Strapi backend to uh, receive my payment intent, which means that here on the left, or rather here on the right, I have to send the cart to the backend and I need to receive a payment intent token back so that I can then generate my Stripe uh, checkout or my Stripe payment intent element. And once I have my card, I'm gonna be able to process it. So let's look at how this was done. Uh, there's more than one way to do this, but uh, uh, and we cover we discuss both in the vid in the videos. But basically, I'm gonna open my e-commerce backend, which is the Strapi code. And what you'll see is that we have our orders controllers order.js, so our, our controller file. And if you look at the config, we actually have created an extra uh, route in which we have post post slash order slash payment, and it will call a controller called setup stripe. Set up Stripe is here, it's an, it's an asynchronous method which will receive our cart from the request body and then by using, um, we're just gonna fetch all of the products internally and that's because we can't trust the, the products received from the front end. We, we can only trust that they have the correct ID and the quantity and that's why we check here, we basically find the product with the correct ID and we add it to our own cart that we built internally and then we ran it through our math here with the cart total, uh, with this cart total function, which is basically coming from the same library, so that we can then authorize the payment and then send back the payment intent from Stripe. So this means that once you press this button, we basically get the payment intent. And then once you check out, we're gonna instead call the orders.create endpoint, which will receive the payment intent, all of the shipping information, and the cart, because again, we can't trust the cart, we have to rebuild it. So we're gonna rebuild the cart. We have a bunch of checks to see that there's not already an order that uses the same payment intent to avoid uh, uh, getting scammed. And uh, then we're gonna be building our own cart, make sure that the cart is sanitized and it's proper. And then we're gonna run math to figure out what the totals, the taxes, and the subtotal were. We're gonna ensure that the payment amount is equal to the same paid and then we're gonna finally create our order. And once the front end receives the confirmation for the order, then, which uh, you know a lot of stuff is happening in the backend, then we can finally show a successful message and we can clear the card. And obviously you can expand this by sending them to another page, for, especially for uh, Google or um, Facebook tracking. Uh, but beside that, this way you will be able to see an entire uh, e-commerce flow, setting it up with Gatsby, which uh, will, will net you a static site, which will save you uh, immensely in terms of hosting, but at the same time giving you the flexibility of a headless CMS, which allows you to have an interface, a UI, to manage your, uh, your data, manage all of the information, and uh, uh, basically get the best of both worlds. If you enjoyed that video, you definitely want to check out the complete Strapi course. 
It has a 4.6 rating on Udemy with 44 ratings and it has over 250 students enrolled. The majority of the students are extremely satisfied with the course and they end up looking at it or they end up engaging with it way more than they expected. You also get free cheat sheets and as of now, as of filming, this course is over 13 hours. Uh, most of this, my students started when the course had 9 hours. At this point it has 14 and I still have to upload the e-commerce videos which are over 60 videos of us, me and you, building the e-commerce with Gatsby, with Stripe and with Strapi all together. So at that point we're going to have 220 lectures. I think it's going to be in the 15 to 16 hours range and I also assure you that with major updates of Strapi, I will be updating the course. So the next big update will be when Strapi releases, goes from beta to the live version, in which I'm going to be rebuilding all of the theory segments, which are, um, as you can see here, it's the first, uh, around the first 20 sections that go up, up until the cron job and email sending, uh, so that all of the materials, all of the resources will be updated and they are updated every time uh, Strapi updates. And then the projects, which are uh, more for, for getting, uh, getting you familiar with the code, I'm gonna update them based on popular demand. So I've started uh, the course by having a simple leaderboard with jQuery, a portfolio website, a file upload, which uh, everybody seems to really need help on file upload. So there's like 40 videos on file upload at this point. We have building a stock inventory, which is a preview you can see on YouTube as well. Then we have the improved version, which is also on YouTube. Then we have the logging in of uh, um, users by handling the JWT token in the secure way. So this is a video, if you want to look the practical part of uh, uh, the video in which I cover handling JWT security, it's here in the course. Then uh, Strapi released Dynamic Zones, and so I built the, 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 a portfolio builder based on Dynamic Zones, which is a great way to have, uh, uh, let's say, more visual people build their own website. So basically, it's the basic, the foundations for building a uh, UI-based uh, website builder. Then we use Strapi with Gatsby. There's an, an hour of building a blog. And now we're going to have over two hours, I think two or three hours of us building an e-commerce with Stripe, all safe, all secure, done in a professional way. So if you're interested in that, I'm gonna make a coupon to get you the best price I can. Make sure to check the link in the description. Uh, I, I'm really proud of this project and I stand behind it and I support it. I'm also a one-on-one -on -one teacher in case you're interested in one-on-one -on -one sessions. So you can uh, DM me on YouTube or you can check me out on um, codementor.com. Uh, but that said, uh, this is something I'm very happy with and I'm very satisfied. I hope you enjoy it as well. If there's any topic you want me to cover, please let me know. However, know that I give, uh, I give uh, priority to my students. So if you want to support me, you can do that in an extremely win-win manner. You get basically 15 to 16 hours of videos and you also get access to uh, sending questions and answers on the Udemy or on the Podia course. So that said, thank you very much. Make sure to check the link in the description right now while it's fresh in your mind. Just click on it, just check it out. Let me know what you think and have an amazing day.